DMX. It can be f***ing complicated. DMX or DMX512, as it's kind of known for, it stands for digital multiplex and is a standard for digital communication networks commonly used for lighting or effects. There's two ways DMX can be used. You can have wired DMX or you can have wireless DMX, also kind of known as CRMX, which stands for Cognitive Radio Multiplexer. First, let's talk about wired DMX, which is still very commonly used for complex lighting networks because simply it's wired. How can you go wrong with wires? Wires don't lose connection like a wireless setup could possibly do during a show. For venues like concerts, musicals, and sporting events, these are great if you're gonna have the system in place for a long period of time where you can set it up and it's gonna stay there. DMX uses a cable that looks very similar to XLR, which is commonly used for audio. You've probably seen them on set and it's easy to confuse them if you can't see the pins on them. Standard DMX these days uses a DMX five pin cable, but there are also some cables that are three pin DMX cables, but they are essentially the same. Looking at this pin data sheet, we can see that a DMX five pin cable doesn't even use data two minus and data two plus. Essentially, they're not really doing anything. They're not even hooked up sometimes. So there are two main reasons for the five pin instead of the three pin. One was to differentiate DMX from XLR from the three pin to the five pin. And two was to potentially use these other two pins as a future feature, but big DMX hasn't done anything with it yet. So yes, you can use DMX three pin cables for DMX, but a lot of these newer lighting units now come with a five pin dedicated port on them and not a three pin anymore. Now they do make adapters to take you from a three pin to a five pin and vice versa. I've used them before where you need to take a three pin light and get it into a five pin system and they work usually pretty good. My suggestion would be if you have to go that route to buy a good quality connector, don't go cheap. Now if I'm running all three pin DMX instead of five pin, why not just use some XLR cable I have lying around that's the same exact kind of cable? Well in theory you could do that and it would work, but XLR cable cable has a lower impedance than DMX cable does. XLR is about 70 and DMX uses 120 impedance level wiring. However, when something doesn't work or does go out, you're going to have a real problem trying to figure out what cable it is if you have a mix of XLR and DMX. So stick to dedicated DMX cables, whether that be three pin or five pin. So let's talk about DMX channels. DMX 512 is what it's called, is kind of in the name. There's 512 channels in one universe. That may be a little confusing, so let me break it down some more. A DMX universe is made up of those 512 channels. That's one universe. That's the max it can hold. Each light has a lighting profile, and depending on which profile you pick will determine how many channels you use per light, whether that be color, effects, pan and tilt, etc. So a basic DMX channel for a light might have channel one as intensity and channel two as color temperature. So you'd be using two channels of that 512 starting on channel one. Now, if you wanted a light to do more kind of effects and stuff, you might have to put it in an effect profile, which could be up to 100 channels of DMX just for that one light, depending on what profile. Let's say you have a Titan tube, for example, which has 16 pixels. Let's say each pixel can do 16 different things. And if each of those pixels can do 16 things, that means you have a total of 256 if you times them together. So you can have up to 256 channels just for that one light, depending on your profile. So you can see that quickly you can get up into a lot of channels if you have a lot of effects work. If you're doing basic color or whatnot, you can have a lower number of channels. Let's say for instance that each one of those Titan tubes took up 100 channels and you had six of them. Well, you have 600 channels, which is over the 512 limit. So you would have to go into a second universe, which is exactly the same, 512 is just another universe. So they would spill into that other universe for that last sixth light. So if you were starting your DMX channels on one, you would set your light to address one, DMX address one. So that Titan tube would go from one to 100. Then your second tube would start on 101. So your address for the second light would be 101 and from so on and so forth. This is crucial if you want to have your lights set up correctly because even if you're off by one number, your light's not going to pick up the uh, signal quite right and it's going to be slightly off and you're going to get weird things going on. It might work, but it's going to not do what you want. So when you hear the term 512, just think of one universe because that's the limit per universe, mainly because that's the limit that a DMX cable can carry at one time is 512 channels per cable. More universes, more 512s, and more cable as well. Currently, I'm using 16 channels on this light. I'm using CCT, RGBW, and um, FX 8-bit, so that's taking up 16 channels. I can change this channel to something else. This profile here, this is profile 35, this is zone mode, so I can use each individual pixel on here when there's eight of them. This takes up 130 addresses. 
because it's got 16-bit zones and you times eight by however many each one can do, it gets up there very quickly. After a while, this became a problem running all these cables, they came up with another solution. Instead of running all this cable, why not just run one cable? And they came up with RJ45, which is essentially just an ethernet cable. This was a big upgrade for DMX as you can run multiple universes through just one cable. And ethernet has a length of about 1500 feet before it loses much loss, even farther. DMX, usually they say limited to about a thousand feet of cable run. A lot of lighting consoles have RJ45 ports built in. So instead of running like eight cables up to the stage, you can just run one ethernet cable up to the stage. They'll take that ethernet cable and they're plugging into a ethernet to DMX converter. And then you can run your universes out of that box individually through separate cables. So it's a big cable saver for a main run like from the front of house up to the stage. As you can see, I have DMX in, which is a five pin, and I got DMX through for daisy chaining. A lot of the new lights now have both of these. Mine also has the RJ45 port, which is the ethernet. Some lights don't have this. Usually they're on higher brand lights, but you can use that as well for DMXing if you wanna go straight from ethernet from the console straight in. Now there would be a simple way to get rid of these cables altogether if we went with wireless DMX, or as some people call it, CRMX, which is the golden standard created by Lumen Radio. This is where you have a dedicated transmitter box outputting wireless CRMX to a light with another device by the unit or units that converts the CRMX back into DMX over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth signal. Then you would be able to plug in your lights into that receiver using DMX cable. Or if you have an even higher brand light that has CRMX built in, you can disregard the receiver altogether and just go from the transmitter directly to the light over CRMX signal. But you do have to have CRMX built into the light for that to work. If you didn't have CRMX built in, then you would need the receiver. And a great receiver is the Lumen Radio Moonlight, which you can plug your fixtures directly in via five pin DMX. If you had more than one light, then you can keep daisy chaining down the line, or you can even get a second Moonlight unit as well. So you would have your lights either coming through CRMX back to the transmitter, or be going to the receiver and then going back to the transmitter. And then your transmitter gets plugged into whatever console unit you have, whether it be an iPad or a lighting console. And then that's how you would control the lights. Some examples of these CRMX boxes include the Lumen Radio Stardust. There's the Rat Pack AKS, another great portable unit. And Aperture also makes one as well called the Citus 4. Now one thing all these have in common is they're definitely pricey and they're more expensive than just going with a wired setup. But with that price comes simplicity and the wireless freedom. Once you get a wireless setup working, it is so clean and so quick. Now for me, I mainly do films, commercial work, and docs and stuff like that where we're quick in and quick out. So a wireless system works great for me. If you're working a big concert that's there for maybe a week or two weeks or months, maybe a wired system would be better for you. If you're in a big venue with a lot of phones and you're using, trying to use Wi-Fi or something like that, it's not gonna work very well. It's gonna get discombobulated with interruptions. Now this was just a little bit of in-depth overview about DMX. We can go into a lot more. I just wanna keep it relatively short. That's all I have for you guys this week. If you got any questions about DMX, drop them in the comments. Please like and subscribe, it helps me out. We'll see you next week.